Praise the Lord. <laughs> if it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Where would I be if it had not been for the Lord on my side? Tell me where would I be? Where would I be if it had not been for the Lord on my side? Tell me where would I be? Where would I be if it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Tell me where, where would I be? He kept my enemies away. He let the sun shine through a cloudy day. this Wednesday, Lord Jesus, that we could come and learn more about you, get better, Lord Jesus. You can dig around us. You can show us ourselves, and we can, we can get it right. And we can get it right before it's time to go home. So, Lord Jesus, I just thank you right now, Lord Jesus. I thank you for being my Savior, Lord Jesus. I thank you for loving me, Lord Jesus. When nobody else in this world loved me, you love me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for keeping me, Lord Jesus, and keeping my brothers and sisters and my family, Lord Jesus. I just thank you right now, Lord Jesus. I thank you for this church and this place of worship, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for our pastor, Lord Jesus, and the first family, Lord Jesus. Thank you for their faithfulness, Lord Jesus. Thank you for their obedience, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the wisdom and knowledge that you've given them to lead your people, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, as we listen to this message, Lord Jesus, help us look at ourselves, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, so we can get right with you, Lord Jesus, and be ready when you return, Lord Jesus. And before you return, Lord Jesus, that we can help somebody else, Lord Jesus. Because it's not just about us, Lord Jesus. It's about us helping somebody else, Lord Jesus. So thank you, Lord. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Hallelujah. I just want to praise your name, Father. Yes, I just want to glorify you, Lord Jesus, in everything we say and do. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Praise. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Still vibrating, echoing. You hear that echo? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Who been messing with their controls? <laughs> Second Peter chapter two. Second Peter chapter two. Thank you, Lord. That sounds about right, close to it. Can y'all hear me out there? Y'all can hear me? Second Peter chapter two. Be not deceived. Still talking about being not deceived. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Verse, chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Verse 1 and 2. We got it? Let's read. But there was false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Verse 2 said, well, And many shall follow their pernicious way by reason of whom the way of truth shall be. Amen. Amen. Tonight, I want to talk about, I want you to go to 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 4, amen, amen, amen. Do you have a Bible? You have a Bible? Simone, we don't, you don't have the key here. I got a key to everything. It's not for you to come and get it later, but I got one. So don't come up here looking for it. All right, so get her a Bible. Okay. Um, tonight, I want to talk about the body of Christ. We're still talking about don't be deceived, but the body of Christ is in fear. The body of Christ is fearful. Not me. Not, not Church of Apostolicity. But the world have preached fear into the body of Christ. They, they, they have put fear so deep that, that nobody serve God like they supposed to. Because they're afraid. They're afraid to stand on what the word of God says. God told uh, Joshua. He said, Joshua, have not I commanded you. That means don't let nobody frighten you, Joshua. Don't let nobody get in your head. Amen. Um, I think I mentioned Sunday or last Wednesday or, Bible or Sunday school or something. God told me to go back to the old way. Now, I didn't know no Bible when he told me that. I, I didn't know nothing. So I had no idea what that meant. You know, so I did not know that going back to the old way meant people was going to criticize and not believe and say I'm crazy and say I'm a witch doctor. I didn't know all of that, but I know who told me to do what I'm doing. So I'm not going to let people bother me because I know who told me to do what I'm doing. Amen. Amen. We have to know who told us to do what we're doing because serving God the correct way can look a little bit strange. Amen. 
So we go to 2 Timothy chapter 4. I still hear echo in the, in the mics. In the mic, rather. Chapter 4. Now, Peter was telling the body of Christ, there are going to be false teachers around you, just like it was in the Old Testament and with Israel. It's going to be false teachers. You might as well get ready for that. And they're going to bring in damnable heresy. I mean, they're going to tell you a bunch of stuff that's going to send you to hell. It's coming. He said, and then they're going to get to the point that they, they get to the point that they're going to deny. They, they, they actually deny God because they give the blame and the credit everywhere but who it belongs to. Um, in, in the book of James, he said, the devil knows there's one God. So why are we hollering about this too and try on? The devil knows there's but one God. But somehow man done got in folks' head talking about there's three. Or man has got in our head telling us that we are gods. Or man then got in our head telling us that we, we know what we're doing. That's making yourself a God. Because the only person that knows what they're doing is God. See, now, remember, pernicious ways that they gradually teach you. So they tell you that you can do all of these magnificent, wonderful, powerful things and leave God aside. That's pernicious way. They're gradually teaching you false doctrine. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. What does he say? For the time will come when they will not endure. People don't want to endure sound doctrine. Sound meaning it's fact. It's the truth. It's the only way. Sound doctrine, but after their own lust. After their own lust, what's going to happen? Teachers. People are looking for teachers to preach to their lustful ways. They're looking for teachers to preach. Listen, those are false teachers and false preachers. People don't want to hear sound doctrine. They want to hear a watered down version of the Bible or the water, a watered down version of the word of God. That's pernicious ways. They're, they're, they're teaching you to be fearful. They're teaching you to battle something that you don't have to battle, which is the devil. You don't have to fight the devil. Fight yourself and you'll whoop the devil. Amen. You fight the devil, you're going to lose. Amen. Yeah. Verse 4 say what? And, and they shall turn away their ears from the, turn their ears away from the, telling people you don't have to do all of that. That's, that, why would God tell you to do something if you don't have to do it? God does not waste his voice or word just running his mouth. We do that. Anything God says, he means what he says and says what he means. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto. They want somebody to tell them, touch somebody, tell your neighbor, stomp the devil, wave your hand, uh, name it and claim it. Those are fables. No, those are fables. Amen. We don't, you know, uh, what it was, uh, 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 another one said, you don't receive that. Whether you receive it or not, if God wants you to have it, you're going to get it. Amen. Now, the best thing for you to do, what I tell y'all, to bow your back and take it. Because if it hits you, you got it. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. The problem with us, y'all, we done got fearful. We mean in the body of Christ. Amen. You're afraid. People saying, don't preach this because you go to court or you're going to get sued. Okay. But God wrote it, and God told me to preach the word, be instant in seed and out of season. God told me to reprove, rebuke, and with, with all long suffering and doctrine. God told me, John, control the people that come to church because if you can't rule, you can't control your house. You can't control or rule the body of Christ. So where does people get it from that I don't have the right to tell you what to do? I have that right, and I'm going to hold to that right. You don't have to listen to me, but you ain't going to stop me from telling you either. That's your call. Amen? People say God don't want you to be a puppet. Where you get that from? 
what you're afraid of. People are afraid. So they, 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 are, they are constantly wording things to try to manipulate the laws of God to fall in line with man. Amen? I'm going to preach against homosexuality. I'm going to preach against, listen, I got a problem. Y'all heard me saying Sunday. I got a problem with Black History Month. I don't want no Black History Month. It's too segregated. It's, it's too busy telling the white folk, we still got a problem with you. Well, our preachers, don't you know, it ain't the people. It's the spirit that motivates the people. The same spirit that motivates a white man to be prejudiced, promote a, a black man to join a gang. The same, it's the same devil. So why are we fighting against one another? Yeah. We, we can't get into church and preach segregation. I don't care who started it. I don't care about Martin Luther King starting it. I don't care about uh, W.D. Du Bois and all. I don't care about they wrong. That ain't Bible. That ain't Bible. Does it help humanity? Yes. All of the gays that run Hollywood help humanity. They make y'all smile. You go to the movie and you have fun, so they're helping you. But that doesn't mean it's of God. It's wrong. I don't care about people getting mad. It's wrong. We preach, we preach Jesus Christ. We don't preach segregation. We don't preach presentism. We don't preach black. When you know how we are, who we? Who's, who's we? Who is we? Fables. Fables. And everybody is happy about a black history month. Well, why can't we have a white history month? Why can't we have a Japanese history month? Why can't we have a Puerto Rican history month? Why is the blacks the only ones deserve a black history month? Just because you remember what black folks did? So white folks didn't do nothing, huh? Japanese didn't do nothing. Korean didn't do nothing. So why we got to remember what we did? I don't care who invented the cotton gin. And I know who invented it, according to history. I don't really care. I don't care about who helped me get rights because everything, listen, y'all listen to me. Everything we got come from Jesus Christ, come from God. He get to choose whoever he want to choose to do whatever he want to do. I don't care what color your skin. I don't care how fat you are, how skinny you are, how long your hair. I don't care about none of that stuff. All I care about is Jesus. History is not going to help me live holy. Oh, hallelujah. You want to teach it and preach it? Get in the classroom. Just don't do it over the pulpit. What am I saying? I am not saying that it all wrong. I'm saying it wrong the way it's being presented to us behind the pulpit from preachers. They should leave preachers. Churches should leave that stuff alone. They're gradually teaching you evil. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. They're teaching you fable. They're teaching you we got to do all of this. What? What knowing my history about how I can go to a water fountain got to do with me speaking in tongue and living holy and over what that got to do with anything? Teach it in the classroom, don't teach it over the pulpit. We should not promote worldly beliefs and worldly icons just to get folks in the church that have nothing to do with salvation. We come to church to know how to live holy. You don't go to the doctor to learn how to bake a pie. Nobody went to the hospital at Cedar to learn how to bake a pie. They went in there because they were sick. We should not come to church to determine how we became free black people. That ain't what we come to church for. We come to church to find out how to please God and go to heaven, y'all. Oh, what am I saying? We're afraid. We're afraid. Too much fear is in the body of Christ. Somebody said, you got to watch how you talk to the people. There's nobody on God's green earth can take me to court and accuse me of being a bad pastor. Nobody. Nobody that can heard my voice can say I misled you. You can't take me to court and win that. That's impossible. Because my first question is going to be, did you do everything I said? And your answer is going to be no, so how did I mislead you? You didn't do everything I said. We can never accuse God as being an unfair God because we don't do everything he say. He said, if you stop sinning, I'll take care of you. So if he don't take care of you, my question to you, did you stop sinning? No, well, he didn't take care of you. The, 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 the only reason he said I'm going to take care of you because you stopped sinning. So every time you sin, I don't, have, I don't have to do nothing for you. 
So make him out of a lie. So what am I afraid of? Did somebody say I, mis I misrepresented Jesus? I'm, I, I counseled him. So I told you to marry that person, and that was the right person, and you marry him. But I told you to obey him, and you didn't obey him. So did I mislead you? You only did part of what I said. You didn't obey him. So how did I mislead you? Prove to me I misled you. Because you can't prove to me you did everything I said. So why am I fearful? What's there to be fearful about? What's fearful about me taking money out of the church when the Bible said the only reason y'all give money to the church is for me? So what, what am I fearful of? What, what am I fearful of? What am I saying? I'm, I'm still showing y'all people have deceived the body of Christ so they're afraid to do something. Do y'all know God fixed the laws of the land so the pastor can take anything he wants out the pot? They call it a 501c3. People done abuse that law. See, when y'all hear people going to jail because they're taking money, they ain't just getting money from offering and tithe. They getting money from fundraiser. You just broke the law. Because now you're running a business. You're making a profit. You're selling something. And anytime you sell, you just got the government in the back. And you, just, you just got in the bed with the United States government. Oh, hallelujah. But see, they don't tell y'all all of that. They get on TV and try to make it seem like the government is wrong, and they don't want to admit, well, you a liar. You said you was a 501c3. You filled out a form, and you told them how you was going to get your money. You did not tell them you was going to have fundraisers. When they find out you have fundraisers, now you abusing the system, and when they finally catch you, they make it seem like the government is wrong. No, you broke the law. I'm going to show y'all something in a minute, but I'm putting it, showing it in your mouth. A person that lies always careful with what they say. Say it again. When you a liar, you are careful with what you say and do. Because you know you got to remember it. When you tell the truth, you don't have to remember nothing. It's built in you. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So people want to be told how to be slick. So they go to slick preachers. They want to be told how to be prejudiced, so they go to a preacher that teach them Black History Month. Keep it in their spirit. Keep it stirred up. They want to be told how to be evil, so they seek out a preacher to teach them how to be what they want to be. That's what he just said. They don't want sound doctrine, but after their own lust, they heat. In other words, they go looking for the type of preaching that they want to hear to conform to the way they think. And they find it because it's always, well, what, did, what did David ever, David Richards say? The devil know what kind of Twinkie or candy bar or something you want. The devil know what you want to hear. So he lets you find what you want to hear because that's what you want to hear. Listen, pernicious way. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Now, let's go to St. John chapter 8. St. John chapter 8. God ain't told nobody in the New Testament to hate nobody but the devil. He said, get away from those that teach evil. Get away from them. He didn't say hate them. He said, because pre-adventure, I might save them, but I don't want you hanging around them because they're going to put stuff in you that's going to turn you away from me. Listen, we got to give glory to God in everything. I don't care what kind of test and trial. You say, thank you, Jesus. How about the devil messing with me? God is messing with you. Because you got a problem. Amen? Amen? You got a problem and God is messing with you. Get rid of the problem and he won't mess with you. Your problem could be you're living too good. And he wants you to live better. Amen? Some of y'all living good and he give you more tests and trials. He wants you to be better. Jeremiah finished high school, didn't he? I want him to be better. Go to college. Problem just got big now. Because I can't, I can't help you do the homework. It's out of my lead. Especially in the field he's going in. But he's got to study harder now. I can't get up and take you to school and be there and all that old stuff. I can't do that no more. Your problem just increased. But it's increased to make you better. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Chapter 8, verse 31. You got it? I'm not, I'm not, y'all need to understand. See, I keep telling y'all, God raised me. 
I was never into black history growing up as a child. So this ain't, it ain't easy, it ain't, it ain't hard for me to say what I say, because I ain't never been into it. I always thought it was a problem. I ignored it. I didn't have time to be prejudiced. It takes too much energy. But I didn't know God was raising me and teaching me. I don't have time to dislike folk because of their color, because I know all of us will kill somebody. No, we got color got nothing to do with it. People sit around talking about I won't kill nobody. Put a gun in your hand and let me beat you upside your head. I bet you bust a cap in me, so don't tell me you won't kill nobody. You just ain't been put in a position to kill nobody. That's all that is. You ain't been incited to do it. You ain't been trained to do it. Parents sit around and watch their kid do wrong, and they holler, up, oh, he going to grow out of it. No, he ain't going to grow. I'm going to kick it out of him. He ain't going to grow out of it. I'm going to beat it out of him. If somebody's going to go to jail for beating my child, it's going to be me. Oh, hallelujah. Tell you like my mama, you say, boy, I kill you. When I miss you, I bring you back to life. <laughs> she had me scared, too. I thought she could do that, you know. Amen. But I was little, you know. Boy, I kill you and bring you back when I miss you. Uh-oh, let me straighten up because I don't want to die. <laughs> Verse 31 said what? Then said Jesus to those which would believed on him. If ye continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. Watch this. 32 say what? This is a million dollar statement here. What does verse 32 say? The truth will make you free. You be honest. You will never be worried about nothing. I ain't worried about nobody taking me to court because of something I said. Yeah, I said it. Would you like to hear me say it, Your Honor? I'll say it again for you. And I ain't going to back down. Do, listen, listen, Your Honor, do whatever you feel is right. Because I'm going to do what I know is right. And I'm ready to deal with the consequences. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But we got people afraid. Afraid. If I go to jail for saying something like this, do you know God put me in there because somebody in there need to get the Holy Ghost? Then folks, oh, are you going to have a prison ministry? No, I'm only going to be in there until I get the job done. When the job is done, it's going to be a freak accident and they're going to let me out. Oh, we made a mistake. No, you didn't make no mistake. You did what God wanted you to do. You don't understand because ain't no mistakes in my life. But you got, you got to feel that way. Otherwise, you're going to live in fear. You get afraid over every little thing that come in your life. What you afraid of? God told uh, Joshua, and I want us to begin to tell ourselves, God say, have I not, have, it, have not I commanded you? So what you afraid of? I got you. Only be thou strong and very courageous, because wherever you go, I'm right there with you, John. You don't have nothing to worry about. All you got to do is tell the truth. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth gonna make you free. A person that's free never worry about getting in trouble because I'm free. In other words, you can't do nothing to me unless it, what did Jesus tell uh, Pilate? You couldn't do nothing to me unless it was given to you. He said, don't you know I got the power? Boy, you can't do nothing unless it was given to you. He said it so bold, Pontius Pilate said, ain't nothing wrong with this man because God let him know, leave him alone, but I'm going to let you kill him. Because that's what he went down here for. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to let this happen to you, John, because it's in your destiny. But you going in it knowing, I don't really care, because this is what God wants to happen. And there's nothing I can do about it. It's destined. I'm destined to teach and preach the way I teach and preach. I've been trained from this from a baby and didn't even know it. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I've been trained not to care what people think. I hope y'all understand what I'm saying. I, I, I wish y'all knew really how I grew up. I've been trained not to care how people think about me. So that's why it doesn't bother me. I've been trained. I've been God destined for me to be the way I am so I could do. And here, then, he, then when I show up, go back to the old way. I have no idea what the old way is. But I've learned. All I got to do is tell you the truth. Did the Bible say to preach against all evil? Yes, yeah, so I do it. Did the Bible say that all the money that come in the storehouse is mine? Yes, because I'm the Levite. I'm the head Levite. 
Oh, hallelujah. Then God said, John, when you take all of it, just give me 10% back. And when you give it back to me, burn it up. He said, when you, y'all go read the scripture. He said, when you give me, he said, you take the best of the best. When you take the best of the best, give me the best of your best. And then he said, go burn it up. Because I don't need it. Oh, hallelujah. So what am I afraid of? It's my job to tell y'all how to live right. So what am I afraid of? What am I afraid of? But if I walk around in fear, y'all will never get right. If I walk around afraid to preach the truth, y'all will never get right. The truth is going to make you free. The truth is going to give you the ability to stand no matter what nobody say, and you ain't going to be afraid. You don't have to walk in fear. You ain't got to worry about nothing coming up behind you for people to say what you said. I know what I said. I know what. You don't have to ask me what I said. What did you hear? That's what I want to know because I know what I said because I don't speak no lies when it comes to the word of God. So how can I not know what I said when I know I said was written? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I know uh, 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 the, the Bible say uh, uh, in business be men. Yeah, in business be men. A man tell the truth, don't he? So in business, yeah, be men. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Just tell the truth. I mean, when you're a liar, y'all, you're worried all the time. So all of y'all, I, I, I want you to get this. Watch how you're walking in fear. If you're walking in fear, look at your life. Are you living in lies? I told y'all last week, or was that Sunday, lies of hypocrisy. You're a hypocrite living lies. That's why you're scared to do what you do. I'm not afraid to do what I do. I'm not afraid to, I'm not afraid to say what I say. I'm not going to back up on what I say because I'm not in fear. Amen. Hallelujah. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 1. The truth shall make you free, not set you free. I hear preachers get up and say set you free. That's why you still bound. Can't nobody capture me and put me in no prison. What did the Hebrew boy say? I don't care what you do to us, king. We're getting away from you. So you can't. You throwing us in that fire in front of you, delivering us. You don't throw us in there, you still delivering us. Because you can't put me in jail because you don't have that kind of power. Can't no, can't no judge put me in jail for doing the word of God. They don't have that kind of power. The police can't put me in jail for doing what the God tells me to do. You don't have that kind of power. Can't nobody strip me of being a pastor. You don't have that kind of power. Oh, hallelujah. See, I know people say, oh, well, listen, in my bylaws, it said I got sole authority and power to do whatever I want to do at Church of Apostolicity and with the money. And guess who approved that? The United States government. See, that, maybe y'all don't know that. That's what the bylaws say. I can do whatever I want to do. Who, who, who going to strip me? Long as I obey the law, I'm going to live in free because I know I ain't doing nothing wrong. Oh, hallelujah. I'm telling y'all, when you live free, when you live free, uh, I'm going to show you something. We're we going to get there. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Um, hold on, let me get there. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. What does it say? Now, this is Paul telling Timothy how to be a pastor. He said, God has not given us. Now, he tells him something, but he's telling him in the end. He said, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of, uh, but of, uh, but of, uh, well, now I want to go back, but of what? Power. God has given you a spirit of what? Power. God has given you a spirit of what? Power. Let's get power straight first. When you got power, who has control over you? Nobody. But y'all got folks controlling you. Preachers got folks controlling them. They got Black History Month controlling them. They got the Black Heritage controlling them. They can't get up and preach truth without throwing some old sideline stuff in there that got nothing to do with salvation. I'm sick of it. Sinners even agree. 
There's sinners out there. I think it was Morgan Freeman. He got on this. I don't want no black here so much. He said, we, we, okay, we did some things, but other races did things. Why we got to be singled out? You know why we got to be singled out? Because people feel like we deserve to be recognized. You ain't recognized? How much recognition you want? How much recognition you want? You want somebody to recognize that your answer? Listen, y'all want recognition that you did something good, but when they recognize you because you're gang-banging infested area, you don't like that recognition, huh? I'm just showing y'all, get this mentality out of y'all head. That's why they always tell them what the black man doing. Well, y'all got a month? Let them tell you what everything you're doing in that, them 28 days. You want to be recognized? Let's get some recognition in. You want to be recognized for the good, but you don't be recognized for the bad. Do y'all realize when they do that, all they're doing is telling how bad the white folk? That's all they're doing. So you ain't getting recognition. You're exposing stuff that your great ancestors went through, and you want that to keep storing up? Y'all really want somebody to keep telling y'all that your great-great-grandmama was a slave? Y'all want to hear that every, month, every year? Y'all want to hear every year how we was beat up? Y'all really want to hear that junk? Because that's all they're doing. Every time they say we've overcome. <laughs> oh, okay, what did you overcome? My great-great-grandmama was beat up, and you want to hear that every year? You want to hear that junk, huh? That's fine. Let the world talk about it, not behind the pulpit. We don't get into that. That people having itchy ears. Well, I'm going to church. You know, they, they're having black hair some mark recognition. I'm going to church. So you want to go and hear some sinful, deceiving, misleading information. So you can find a reason to hate somebody. So don't y'all come to me with that stuff. I'm the wrong person. And I'm, I'm, as, I'm as black as you can get. <laughs> That's funny. I'm, 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 I'm 50% Negro and I'm 50% Cherokee Indian. I ain't going to say it, James. Don't worry. I got, I got my own race, but I ain't going to tell y'all that. I'm, wait, I'm waiting to fill out an application for somebody to ask me what your race. Do y'all want to know what my race is? I'm a Native American nigger. That's my race. If, if a man can say he's a woman and a white woman can say she's black, then surely I can say what I am, can't I? Oh, hallelujah. And I ain't embarrassed because I don't care what you call me. I really don't care. It doesn't matter to me. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I just want y'all to get you. See, but, but, but you see how... You see how bold I am? I got power. You don't determine who I am. I determine who I am. And I'm saved. Baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, and busting my back to live holy. So, you know, I don't need you to tell me who I am. I am who I want to be. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all ain't, y'all, don't, 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 don't bring black history stuff to me. Don't mean nothing to me. I'm going to talk about it. It don't mean nothing to me. I don't care who helped me to be able to go to school. God told you to do that. And you did what you were told. Amen. You did your job. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm waiting for any repercussion. I don't care. Because I got power. What you going to do? Kill me? Praise the Lord. I go to heaven. I can't. Uh, what, what that phrase we used to say, in the, David? I can't lose with the stuff I use. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know why all of this is coming up, because it's showing in my note. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 says, For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. And uh, I love you all. I love everybody. That's my whole point of preaching, is to get you to see it's all about serving Jesus Christ. Get off these fables. Get off these, 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 these in your genealogies. That stuff don't mean nothing. All that matters, y'all, is are you saved? Are you on your way to heaven? Are you living holy? Are you righteous? All that other stuff ain't going to do nothing. You knowing your history about black history, it's not going to get you a good job on Wall Street. You got to know how to count 
Add, read, multiply, and divide. Hallelujah. So you can know all the history you want. That ain't going to get you no job being no banker. You understand? That ain't going to get you no job because who invented the scalpel is going to help you get a job cutting up somebody in a hospital. Oh, what am I saying? We spend too much time worrying about stuff that's got nothing to do with nothing. Nothing to do with nothing. Come on. What else he saying? And of a sound mind. When you're prejudiced, you ain't got a sound mind because it's going to interfere with your ability to show love because you got stipulation based on why and who and who you're going to love based on your prejudice attitude. Now, you ain't going to be able to preach. Watch this. If you base your attitude or you worried about a race, you're not going to preach the word of God true because you're too reserved in what you're going to say. Got another one. Here's the bottom line. If you're afraid, you can't preach. You're too fearful. You're scared to say certain things. I, I told my, I was talking to my daughter one day, um, um, and um, we were talking about homosexuals and gays. And then she said, and I said, well, they're a faggot. And she said, Daddy, that's a curse word. I said, oh, now y'all got the right to change what I grew up saying to make it a curse word. But you got, you, got, you got Steve Harvey on TV cussing all the time, and his ain't curse words. He get up and say curse words all the time. He done destroyed the show in my, in my mind, and people think it's okay. But if I say faggot, I'm cussing. It used to be reversed. What am I saying? Y'all done made good, even, evil, good. Now, get it. Understand, faggot ain't right either. I said that before I got saved. So I'm not going around saying it and in, in, in in, in thinking I'm not wrong, but we was talking, and she was telling me that's, I tell you no curse word. Y'all just said it's a curse word. Because I'd say the way he talk on TV is people cuss on TV like it's nothing, and they think we're supposed to accept it. Oh, Hallelujah. I tell y'all, some of y'all phrases, y'all use. I said, don't use that phrase. I said, because you're really replacing a curse word with another vulgar word, and in actuality, you're still cussing. Because cussing is not so much the word, it's how you mean what you say when you say it. What did the Bible say? It's not what you do, it's the spirit behind what you do. Oh, hallelujah. What am I saying? If you got a sound mind, you're not going to be afraid. People are afraid. What you afraid of? Come on, look at another one. Hebrew chapter 13. Hebrew chapter 13. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of preaching the word of God. I'm not afraid. It's nothing to be afraid of, y'all. God said, John, have not I called you? My P the PAW didn't call me to be a pastor. My pastor didn't call me to be a pastor. There's no bishop called me to be a pastor. God himself called me to be a pastor. So that means God got, a, got, God got my back. I don't need no human to get my back. I don't need, I, I, I've, I've told Jane them, they stand up when somebody, I, James, you ain't got to defend me. God say, if somebody mistreat me, I get sinners to protect you. God don't need saints to protect me. God got sinners that'll do that. Preachers walking around, got all these bodyguards. What you afraid of? Somebody running up on you and hugging you and saying hi? So now you too uppity, you can't say hi to everybody. You restricted now. I got to be a bishop to get close to you. Oh, hallelujah. I got to be a district elder or something in bishop to get close to you. I got to have a certain title to get close to you. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus said, all ye that are laden with heavy laden, Come unto me. Come unto me. And we're supposed to be in the image of Jesus Christ, but everybody can't come unto us now. Everybody can't come unto us. You got to have a certain title to get close to certain people. If I got to have a certain title to get close to certain people, you know I never get close to you, right? Even if I get the title, I won't get close to you. Because I don't want to be in your presence. Because in my mind, you're not a preacher of God. You're a preacher of man. Don't y'all stop nobody from getting close to me. They may stab me. They can't stab me unless God tells them to do it. I don't care what's in their head. I don't care what the devil thinks. 
Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Told y'all God raised me. I had no idea why I was being raised the way I was raised. And see, I'm not learning to be bold now. I've always been bold. Because I was being raised by God for the preparation of what he had for me to do. Oh, hallelujah. That's why I told y'all the story on Sunday about the guy standing behind me. Even if y'all don't believe, I don't care. I know what I did. I know. Talking about fighting blind. My thing is, if it's my time to die, then I'm going to die. But I ain't going to die. And I'm talking in the world. I said, if I'm going to die, I'm not going to die in fear. And I found out I never died, huh? So what you, th listen, if I thought that way in the world, how do y'all think I think now? Y'all remember one time I told y'all the guy had a gun pointing at me? And I told the guy, if you don't shoot me in my head, you ain't going to kill me. I said, nah, you better put the gun down before I take it. And, you know, of course I cuss. He got the gun pointed at me, Tony. But I, you know, in my mind, I really believe he wasn't going to hit me in the head. I believe he was going to shoot me. But I felt if he shot me, I was going to still get my hands on him. The boy put the gun down and walked away. Now, I thought that was John, just bam, you know. Bad. But that was God looking out for me. Now, if God looked out for me as a foolish, stupid sinner, what you think he's going to do for me now that I'm baptized, saved in his name? Listen, what do I, listen, do y'all understand? What do I have to be afraid of? Got nothing to be afraid Y'all get rid of this fear. I don't know what you went through. I don't know how bold you were in your life. But I'm, I, I venture to say you had some bold statement and bold moment where you wasn't afraid of nothing. Now, why are you over here with God and everything got you shaking now? One preacher, one preacher, we were talking one day, reminiscing. We were saying we were, me and another preacher, yeah, we would be in there cheating. And uh, one preacher said, yep, I was, the, I was the guy that come in there and rob y'all. He said, I'll wait till y'all get all the money, and we walk in, me and my buddy walk in with guns and take everything y'all got. But you look at him, you would never think he had that type of mentality. I'm a cheater, and he's a robber, and now we both preaching the word of God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. So you know we're going to be bold, because we done done some bold stuff unsaved. People are afraid, y'all. People are afraid. Don't be afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of. That's a trick of the devil. And what it is, he's using your lust to convert it against your own self because you want somebody to preach what you want to hear. I want to hear the truth. Amen? Come on, Hebrew chapter 13, verse 5. What does it say? Let your... He letting them know. He said, y'all can do a lot of things. Y'all got to have brotherly love. Y'all got to remember you might entertain strangers. They might be angels. He said, remember them that are in bond and in sick. Marriage is honorable. It's time for you to stop being whoremongers. And, adult. and he said, now let your conversation. In other words, he said, time to be honest. Read. Let your conversation be without covenant. Stop talking about what you want all the time. You get these people that's on welfare. General relief, food stamp, and they always cover just say, I'm going to. Yeah, I'm going to get me a car one day. I'm going to get me a better house. When you cover just and you ain't got nothing. Because you're lazy and you won't be on it and get up and go get a job. You're laying around talking about you can't work, but you get up every day running around, but you can't get up and go to a job. Something wrong with you. You're not in your sound mind. Who want to live off $780 for the next eight years? Sitting by the post office box every day on the 5th, the 10th, the 13th. Ain't you sick of that? Person that's got a good job spends $780 in five seconds. Your car note and your insurance take that easy. If you got a good car now, if you got buckets, I understand. But y'all get my point. Person that got a job, how, how fast we can spend seven hundred eighty dollars? Some of us, some of y'all got jobs so good, y'all pay that in tax and in, in taxes every month. Oh, hallelujah! 
Thank you. You're sitting around covering stuff all the time. And the preacher, ain't, the preacher won't preach you off this free money. That free money is for the needy, not the greedy. Amen? Amen. Let your conversation be without what? Covenant. And be, be what? Be what? Be what? Be what? So why ain't we content? Be content what? With such things as ye. Be content with what you got. God know how to slip stuff to you when he wants you to have something. You ain't got to sit around begging all the time. When you beg folk, you can't preach the truth. When you beg folk, you can't preach to the congregation because you're scared somebody's going to hold their money back. Well, I don't want to upset that family because if that family go. Sabrina and David was to take their two kids and all their grandkids. How many people you lose? Uh, uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. We lose 21 people. You think I'm going to preach to satisfy them? All 21 of them can get up and walk out of here, and I'm going to say the devil have left the building 21 times. <laughs> and ain't going to blink, because I don't need their money. I got who I need, Jesus Christ. I'm not going to preach to keep no family here. I'm going to preach to keep saved folks here. I'm going to preach to keep folks here that want to live holy. Oh, hallelujah. Did I miscount? That's all right, it's a bunch of them. <laughs> Amen. Come on. Let your conversation be without. Amen. I will. What did he say? I will. I will. Come on, y'all read it. I will. John, I got you. If you live right, John, I got you. Don't you worry about what people do. Listen, y'all, all of y'all, if y'all live right, God got you, man. Just tell the truth. Be honest. Be honest in your conversation. Be honest in the way you live. Be honest in living holy. Stop your lying. Listen, get freedom in your life by just being honest. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. What verse was that? Six said what? Write this. So what? You can do what? You can do what? You can, wait a minute. You can boldly say what? You can boldly say, I don't need Sabrina money. I don't need David money. I don't need James money. I don't need Aaron's money. I don't need Cassini's money. I don't need none of them kids money. I can boldly say, I'm going to have a wonderful church. I don't care who leave here. But people, people that lie, they ain't going to preach the truth. Because they fearful. Man, I can't lose that family. Can't lose that family. Can't lose that family. Can't lose. No, I can lose all y'all. God will raise me up another one. And all of y'all end up on the deep end somewhere. Because y'all disobeyed him. Oh, hallelujah. What am I saying? When you are not afraid. When you... This is all I'm getting you. This. I'm just using a bunch of examples, but all, I'm, all I want y'all to leave here tonight knowing when you are not afraid, you can stand on the word of God flat foot. I don't care who say what. I don't care who say what. When people ask me to preach, I said, do you know how I preach? Do you know what I preach? So don't think you're going to get me on the pulpit and correct me. Because if, if any preacher ever asked me to preach and get up and correct me, I drop the mic and say, I told you who you was dealing with. You can have your pulpit. I don't need it. But don't ask me to preach and think you can muzzle me. You can't. So you make sure you know who I am before you ask me to get behind your podium. Because I will talk about you if it fits you. Oh, hallelujah. Because I ain't going to lie for nobody. If I don't lie for myself, why would I lie for somebody else? I can boldly say. I can boldly say. Oh, hallelujah. Listen, we all can get like that. All you got to do is tell the truth. But when you're a liar, you're worried all the time. 
you're afraid of being caught in your lies. We can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Shall indicate they will. Can I say it again? Shall indicate they will. But I'm okay. Because I know whatever they do, God authorized it. And ain't nothing I can do about it. Did he authorize it because I'm evil? Maybe. Did he authorize it because I'm righteous? Maybe. In any case, he authorized it. I can't do nothing about it. But if I know, if I know, if I know, if I'm being tested in something and I know I didn't do nothing, then I know he's testing me because I got it in me. It just haven't come out and he's going to get it out of me before it come out. And if he tests me on something that I know I did, I should just shut up. In the, listen, there's a scripture where he said, he said, when you're a buffet for your fault, do you say anything? Y'all know that scripture? Y'all want to read that one? Yep, y'all want to read it because y'all don't know it's there. Let's find it. Look up buffeted for your faults. Come on, all y'all that claim you're on the computer, you're on the, 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 the thing. Is in James or Peter? I don't know. Let's go. First Peter what? 2 and 20? Yep. It's on the right side of my, left side of my Bible, so you're right. I know where it is in my Bible. I just don't know who, who wrote it. Come on, read. Y'all got it? First Peter 2 and 20. Everybody got it? Say amen. Yes. Read. He said, when you're buffeted for your, in other words, when you beat up and corrected for your fault, you take it, don't you? Because you know you was wrong. Read the next verse. Look what he say. And you suffer for it. He said, so when you're doing good and you get beat up, why don't you do it? Why don't you take it? You look good in God's eyes. When you take it, when you did it wrong, you look good in the devil's eyes. So why don't you take it when you do right? You look good in God's eyes. I ain't do nothing wrong. I ain't do nothing wrong this time. They ain't gonna I ain't, you're acting a fool because you this time you didn't do nothing, which is a lie. That's why when I get a ticket, I don't say nothing. That's where they owe me that one. I do. Like my wife. I said, well, I don't want to pay it, but they, I'm due that one. Because I got away with something. So I ain't going to act a fool. I just, I just got to give up the money. So I got caught this time. I mean, one time I got a ticket. A guy was crossing. God, girl, I don't remember now, was crossing the walkway, and a car was in front of me. The car didn't stop. I stopped and told the person, come across. They said, no, you go. I said, no, you go, you know, because they done walked out there. And then finally, he said, you. And so I went, police pulled me over. So you know I'm hot. I'm going, now, what you pulling me over for? Well, you, you didn't. Let, I said, but didn't you watch us go back and forth? He said, I don't care. He should have. You should have let him win. I said, well, what about the car in front of me? He didn't stop. This is what he said that really made me want to jump out that car. He said boldly in my face, I was going to get him, but you showed up. And I said, and I wasn't just saved then. <laughs> Y'all know what I mean. I said, Lord, you got to help me right now. Because I was saved, but I, I went to... Because he don't know you. You don't know. Man, I get out here and we'll fight. And if I die, I just die. But I'm just showing you, God will test you. Man. And I drove away hot. I was hot a long time. And, I, and, and then I had to start saying, Lord, you got to find a way for me to take stuff like this. Because it ain't that he's all the way right, but he's all the way wrong. Because I showed up. In other words, he was saying probably because I was black. Didn't matter. The fact that you could make a statement like that to me because you the police and you think you justified. What am I saying? If you take it patiently when you're right, 
But I was wrong because I still should have let him win. I can't make the guy go in front of me when he's telling me to go. What am I supposed to do? Park my car and say, no, you're going. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. When ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently. This is acceptable with God. Look, God smiles when you let somebody mistreat you and you take it. Y'all wonder why I tell y'all to take it? You're going to get, you, listen, God going to bless you for taking it. Not only does he bless you and give you strength to take some more, he bless you where you feel good. Y'all ever felt good in your soul for being persecuted? Can anybody know what I'm talking about? You've been persecuted, you take, like, man, I took that, boy. You, you like, you just, you get excited. Well, y'all will get there one day. Amen. Come on, let's look at another one, Matthew. Now, what I tell y'all all the time, Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, tell y'all everything we just read over in Timothy and Hebrews and Peter. Y'all want to see the verse where he tell you that? Go to Matthew chapter 6. Huh? Matthew chapter 6. Verse 34. See, Jesus told us this in one, in one statement. Verse 34. Everybody got it? Read. What does it say? Sufficient. You are worried about tomorrow. So therefore you can't preach the truth. Because you're dealing with evil today. And you're worried about evil tomorrow. Well, sufficient today is the evil thereof. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to take care of itself. You have another set of evil. You're going to have evil every day. But you letting tomorrow evil interfere with your today's evil. In other words, you're using today's strength on tomorrow's maybe. In other words, you're worrying about tomorrow. For what? You ain't promised. Somebody ain't going to see tomorrow. How do you know that ain't you? One day you won't see tomorrow. You know that, right? Could be today. Well, I'm going to see tomorrow. Oh, Really? I'm glad you got that much faith because I, I, all I know, I'm going to just get today over with and see what God bring up tomorrow. I'll deal with tomorrow tomorrow. I'm not dealing with tomorrow today. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The body of Christ is fearful, y'all. You can't be fearful. You, you, you can't. You can't be a member of this church fearful. You can't be a member of this church sad. You can't be a member of this church complaining. You can't be a member of this church. A whole lot of other rules. You might as well come to church happy. And y'all stop staying home because you're sick. <laughs> stop staying home because you're sick. I don't get it. This is the hospital. Well, Pastor, you know, I just didn't feel good. James chapter 4. I know. I, it is not that I don't believe you didn't feel good. I just know you still could have came to church. Listen, can I give y'all a test? Only you know if you pass the test now. You don't have to come. You don't have to come back and tell me if you pass the test or not. Only you're going to know if you pass the test. Now, honestly, how many days y'all done seen me walk around in here sick with the flu or pneumonia or something? I've been coming to church. I've been coming to church almost 30 years, and I ain't never missed a day of church because I was sick. Never. 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 I missed two Sundays at my church. I didn't miss church. I just wasn't at my church. You understand? Amen. In almost 30 years. I want y'all to hear me on that. So you say, Pastor, how you do this? You know what I say? 
Now, it's going to sound simple, and, but I'm asking y'all, here's the test. Use what I use and see how it works for you. It works for me. I, I can't give you nothing else. You know, it, it's Bible, but it's my way of dealing with the faith that I need to do what God wants me to do. When I feel something coming on, I say, Lord, I ain't got time for this. That's all I tell him. I ain't got time. Now, I may say, Lord, I ain't got time for this. You want me to do something for you and you're going to make me sick? Well, you know I ain't going to get it done if you make me sick, so I ain't got time for this. And 99% of the time, it doesn't go away. He gives me the ability to ignore it. What did Paul say when I'm weak? Y'all get weak, flop out. I get weak and say, Jesus, we got two choices here. Either you're going to help me and take me to do it, or I'm going to do it and pass out doing it. Now you choose how you want this to happen. Because I know you can do it. It's not an option. I know what you can do. Is it necessary for me to be sick and not perform your duty? Is it really necessary, Lord? Because you could just tell me, John, stay home. I don't want you there today. You, you don't have to make me sick to tell me to stay home. Did that, did that make any sense to y'all? I guess it doesn't, huh? God ain't got to make me stay home. By, well, John, I want you to stay home. I'm going to knock you out. All he got to do is say, John, I want you to stay home today. That's all he got to say. He ain't got to make me sick to do that. And I'm still going to say, why can't I go to church? You mean tell me I can't go to church? I thought you told me don't forsake your day. Keep it a statue forever. And you're going to tell me I can't go? Or you're going to make me so sick so I can't go? Am I making sense? See, y'all don't have to miss church. Y'all chew. That's your lust. Because you don't feel good. Well, why don't you ask God to make you feel better? But y'all want to sit at home and act for the, uh, uh, I don't think doctors make house calls no more. You know, this ain't 1920. They may send a nurse, and, but the doctor ain't coming. They say, call 911 and get the ambulance and bring you, you come see me. So if y'all too sick to come to church, call a brother or sister, they'll come pick you up. Just call, call me. I'll come pick you up. I'll send one to pick you up. Amen? Amen. Why y'all so quiet? Y'all listening? James, chapter 4. Y'all want, want to get to heaven, don't you? Yeah, I'm going. Amen. I'm going. Wake up. Amen. I'm going. Amen. I'm going. Amen. Come on, chapter four. I don't know why y'all laugh when I pick on somebody. I can pick on all y'all for one reason or another. Y'all be doing stuff wrong. Y'all want me to stop y'all from laughing? Well, y'all better stop laughing on your own. <laughs> Amen. Come on, verse 1, what does that say? From whence come wars? Wait a minute. So why are people fighting? Why are you fighting? Why you got wars and rumors of war? Where do you think all this stuff come from? Y'all say it's race. Some folks say it's religion. Some folks say because of a color. Some folk because of ancestor. God said, y'all a lie. The only reason y'all fight, read the rest of that. This is why you fight. This is what, this is what brings about wars. What did he say? It, you are fighting. You got a problem. You hate folk because something is going on in you and you want somebody else to pay for your heartache. You want I have to pay for your flaw, so therefore you go out to get revenge to feel better that only lasts a few seconds. But we blame it on what? We got all kinds of stuff we blame it on. 
They disrespected me, so you got a disrespect problem, so you're going to go whoop somebody. If I don't you die out, you won't have that problem. You got a problem because somebody called you out your name because you think you're smart. Somebody called you ugly, so you think you're cute. Somebody said you fat, and all you got to do is look in the mirror and know it to be true. And you got an attitude. Because of the lust that's in your member, because of the war that goes on. You don't want to be called fat? I'm tired of Syrah telling me I got a big stomach. And every time I lose weight, my stomach gets bigger. Because my stomach is not keeping up with my hips and legs and everything else. But one day, she ain't going to be able to say I got a big stomach. So I ain't mad at Syrah. She don't know. She motivating me. Every time I look in the mirror, Syrah comes to my mind. Okay, Lord. Syrah going to say that's big. God dispatched Syrah to buffet me. So I'm not putting her down. I'm telling her, thank for doing God, the job God called you to do. Because every time I look at my stomach, I know Syrah going to come along. Simone loved me better than Syrah. Simone said, Pastor, you lost weight. She said, Pastor, but your stomach. But you lost weight. <laughs> Syrah said, you ain't lost no weight. Look at your stomach. <laughs> so I'm going to get mad at her because she's telling the truth. Because I got issues in my own mind, in my own flesh, because I know my stomach is big, and I don't want nobody saying it. That's how it worked, y'all. So you get an attitude. Why don't you get motivated to fix it? Paul, I dispatched a, 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 a messenger from Satan to buffet you. Paul said, oh, so that's what you've been doing. All this time I've been sick of myself and I'm mad. And you sent somebody to make me see my flaws, to make me mad. Oh, I got it. So when I'm mad at myself, that's when you the strongest in my life. So therefore, come on, Syrah, say it. Because you're going to make me get right. Say it again, Syrah. So when you come up, so when Syrah tell me I don't have a stomach, I'm going to be slim. My wife can say your stomach gone. She can't, uh-uh. She can't convince me my stomach is gone. Nina, you can't convince me my stomach is gone. There ain't but one person that can convince me my stomach is gone. That's Syrah. <laughs> when she say it's gone, it's gone. Because she's been dispatched. Oh, hallelujah. Now, that's an evil person, Syrah. She's been dispatched to get me right. Do y'all get what I'm saying? Amen. I'm just showing you. He said... They come not even of your lust that war in your member. You are getting upset because somebody is telling you who you truly are and you don't like it. So you get an attitude. Now the next time somebody says something to you and you don't like it, look at yourself before you respond and say, well, I ain't like that. Then why are you upset then? Because you don't feel nobody should talk to you like that. And it all boils back to your pride because you think you somebody. Oh, hallelujah. I hope y'all getting what I'm saying. Listen, when you tell yourself the truth, you won't fight. Listen, then you won't be afraid and you're not afraid. Uh, I mean, you're not fearful to preach the truth. So I can get up here. So y'all say, y'all say, well, pastor, you ain't fat. In my mind, I am. That's why I'm working hard. And the hardest thing to go is my stomach. But I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. Because in my mind, y'all, in my mind, I don't like my weight size. So in my mind, I'm fat. Y'all can say what you want to say. Amen. And I'm not going to get upset because somebody want to say it. I'm just going to make sure that one day when she say it, it won't be there. I'm going to get this lust out of me. When I get through with this one, I'm going to have another one I'm going to have to deal with. I don't know what it's going to be. It's going to be something. But I'm never going to stop working on myself because I want to be perfect. And listen, and I'm not just talking about perfect in body. I'm talking about perfect in controlling my mental thoughts, my mental behavior, my reaction. In other words, I want to be perfect like Christ where I can take 
big anything. Listen, and nothing affects me. Why? Because I got to get to the point that I'm not afraid of nothing. Not afraid. Too much fear is in the body of Christ. That's what's causing people not to be honest. I can preach honesty. I can preach it because I don't have a lot of stuff hanging over my shoulder. The reason y'all can't be honest, you got too many lies behind you, and you're afraid they're going to catch up, and they will. The Bible tell you, your ways will be manifested one day. It's going to show up. I don't care what you say. When it show up, don't get mad. Say, thank you, Jesus. Take it in the chest. Amen? You're going to have obstacles in your life. Woe unto the one that bring them. But they come in. That's part of being saved. Folks, what did Jesus tell the disciples? He said, if they hated me, they sure going to hate you. And all Jesus did was what? Tell them the truth. He said, I come to tell you the truth, and you get an attitude. Somebody going to come in their name and lie, and you're going to be okay with it. But when somebody tell you the truth, you don't want to deal with it. When somebody tell you what's right, you don't want to deal with it. Every parent in here, you better tell your child, they better learn. Stop letting them get away with not learning. Amen? They come home and bring y'all bees and see you're doing good. They show it to their pastor. I said, so you're flunking, huh? Well, I got a B. That, that, you ain't learning nothing. Well, I did learn, so why didn't you get an A? Because I messed up. No, you didn't learn it. Because if you'd have learned it, you'd have got an A. What do I tell them? Don't go to school to get an A, Aureli. You go to school to learn, you'll get the A. Don't y'all serve God just to say, I'm doing my best, I'm doing what I can. Do what's right. Stop finding loopholes. Stop having lies and hypocrisy. Stop justifying your hypocritical ways. Stop justifying being average. God said, be ye perfect like your father that is in heaven is perfect. And then somebody want to preach and tell you you ain't going to be perfect. Well, you told me a scripture where God said you would never be perfect. And I stopped preaching it. He told you to be, go and sin no more. Be perfect. Get this mind that was in Christ Jesus, who thought it not robbery to be equal with God. That means be perfect. If you're going to be equal with God, what that's saying? You're perfect. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Perfect. But you want somebody to tell you pernicious thought, well, ain't nobody going to be. No, nah, ain't no nobody. You know, maybe nobody will, but John Portis is going to hit the mark. Because I've been told to do it. Now, what do I have to do to do it? Number one thing I got to do, y'all. One more scripture. I know my time is up, but we're going to get to it. Come on, Revelation chapter 20. Y'all better come on. I can do it in four. Chapter 21, I'm sorry. Verse 15. For without, no, 14. Bless are they who do his commandment that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dog and sorcerer, whoremonger, murderer, idolatry, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. You love them and you make them. You love it and you create lies. You love them and you always got one. Don't matter, I don't read it. Listen, you love it and you love it and you do it. You love a lie. Chapter 21, verse 15. Who, Revelations. Okay, fine. Well, if you knew that, what you asked me for? Listen, whosoever make it, love it and make it a lie. Folks not going around making up lies. Every time you lie, you make it up. Every time you lie, you have to make it up because a lie does not exist. 
The devil knows there's one God, and we got fools talking about there's three God. They love making up lies. Why? Because they preach pernicious ways, and everybody said, Amen. <laughs> hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Nobody saying hallelujah, huh? Hallelujah. Well, let me hear you say it. Hallelujah. Amen. Ain't no need of you saying it was hard. It's going to get harder. Told y'all, I'm taking y'all up. It's time for us to cut the nonsense. Amen. We got to work. We got to we gotta work, man. We got to work, work, work. We can do it. We can do it. Now, this Friday, we going bowling, right? Here. Give the parents. The kids don't need it, so they don't call me and ask me where it's at. Call somebody else. I'm going to give y'all this. Just the parents, because the kids don't need it. That way the parents know where they're going. Amen. Everybody doing good? Y'all enjoyed the Bible class? I did. I thought it was very good. Very good. Amen. Well, we don't have no birthdays, so we don't have to sing no birthday song. <laughs> seven thirty. You got to be there at seven thirty. Seven thirty. See all of them, all of them parents that didn't come tonight with their children, but they'll be at that bowling, and then they want me to understand. See, I have a problem with stuff like that. They, they can't make it to Bible class because they got homework or something, but they'll sure be at that bowling, won't they? Y'all better be there, too, because I done paid for it already. Amen? I'm just showing y'all how. You see, what I tell you, Whitfield, folks going to do whatever they want to do. Folks can do whatever they want to do. Y'all, I know that. Y'all forget them. I keep telling y'all, I'm a human. I think folks think I'm not a human. Amen? Amen. Come on, Sister Minister uh, Hendricks. Your birthday was yesterday. We ain't gonna. Y'all want to sing to her tonight? Who all want to sing? Say yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, you got the majority. Praise the Lord, you guys. Prayer breakfast is Saturday. It starts at 10 o'clock. Breakfast, breakfast will be served at 1030, so you got to be on time. All right? And I'll give you guys your parking tickets when you get there, so we'll have park to pay for the parking on the way out. Amen. We were supposed to have gifts. If you have your gifts, leave your gift. If you have your $10, brothers, leave your $10. Other than that, we'll see you there. Praise the Lord, everybody. Wasn't that a good message? We being taught how to be content with our tests and our trials, that we haven't been given the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Thank you, Jesus. Has everybody given their offering? Please stand. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now, Lord Jesus, for your word, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for our pastor and teaching your word, Lord Jesus flat-footed, the truth, Lord Jesus. 
he doesn't have to take a thing back because it's the truth. And we thank you for that, Lord Jesus, for sound doctrine, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we ask, Lord Jesus, that you continue to open our ears, Lord Jesus, so we can hear the word that you have for us, Lord Jesus. And Lord Jesus, we ask that you bless both gift and giver on tonight, Lord Jesus, and that you keep us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger as we travel back to our homes. Bring us back at the appointed time, Lord Jesus. We give you all praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 